Hello guys and welcome to my Accent Hair Tutorial Series. In this one, we're going to talk about how to uh, get a sculpted hair and put it in Maya as, a, as the guidance to do accent hair. Okay. Uh, if you look at this hair sculpt, you can see it's not very detailed first, right? Um, but also it has this really uh, unique layout. It is not just one model, it's actually multiple separate poly groups, as you can see here. You can hide those smaller pieces, okay? And the reason I'm doing this here is because hair are growing from different part of the skull or the the head, right? So uh, they are not all rooted from this middle line and just go down. For example, this blue part you can see they're growing from those areas, okay? So it's easier to have those layouts in there for you to be able to kind of like tell the hair uh, to create hair guides for accident. Uh, you can see the same thing here, like this is the outer layer, right? But if you uh, had it, you can see there's one more layer inside, another layer, right? Another layer. So there are multiple layers basically for the hair so that I can have guides not on the outer surface, but also the inner surface of the hair, okay? All right. so first thing to do before you get this thing out is of course have a simpler model. This is that much polygon, it's probably too much for Maya to handle. So I'm gonna go for Z plugin and then decimation master. I'm gonna go for 75K. This way ZBrush will decimate it to exactly 75K point, points. And that will be small enough for Maya to handle. All right, and then we can go ahead and uh, find the export settings, check out the group, and then export this guy. Okay. And I'm gonna call it hair. Let me copy that directory. Okay. And now I'm um, back to Maya. Okay, and then I can go for file import hair okay now i don't know why my model got flipped because uh, i'm pretty sure this is why up here in maya and in zbrush if i show the floor you can also see it is going up i i don't know why <laughs> zbrush is never ever good on coordinate coordinates or units so anyway i'm gonna then just need to flip uh negative 180 to get it matched Okay, I think that happens with the newer version somehow. Okay, another thing I did here is that because I sculpted it in ZBrush with like a sphere first, so the head is in the origin and also the size is too small. So what I did here is I have an animation so I can transfer my model from ZBrush size to a proper human being size. So this is the proper size for a human being. And that's the ZBrush size. I need this because uh, ZBrush, even though you can make things bigger and smaller also in ZBrush, first of all, you don't even see the unit. And secondly, when you're making things too big, your brush size cannot get bigger enough and you have to make it not dynamic uh, here, which is a lot of pain to deal with. So I would love to just sculpt in ZBrush in the size it's happy with. In Maya, I have a different animation here that I can go back and forth, <laughs> right? Anyway, so yeah, I have this thing now. I'm gonna mo put it into the all group, which is the group that does have the animation, and I can go back here. Oops, it, it doesn't follow actually, interesting. Uh, let me try that again. It's in the folder. So in C-Ray, yeah. In Siri, it does that. Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't doing that. All right, then I'm gonna unparent it, freeze, tr freeze transformation, center pivot, uh, separate the models into their individual. Oh, before I do that, I also want to have UV for those pieces. So I'm gonna go for UV, automatic. And that's gonna give me the UV uh, in just a second. Okay, and we can even check that see now this is how the UV looks like. Now the reason we need the UV is because we kind of wanted to use uh, the uh, paint effect and that's if you want to paint anything on the surface of the model you need to have some UV. So it's not for texturing. I'm gonna go grab all these and then we can do a separate command now to separate those into their individual pieces and then just to be 
yeah, to check if everything is fine. And then we can start to use pen effect to draw uh, a, a brush on brush strokes on the hair. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab all these guys, deselect that, and Control H, so we can focus on this piece. With this guy selected, we can go to Generate and then Make Paintable. Okay, and then we can go to Generate one more time and Paint Effect Two. And now we can start to paint on the surface of the model. Okay, so I'm gonna go start drawing out. Okay, you want to draw from the root to the tip. Okay, and you also want to follow your design. Here you can see the strands, right? Try to draw on top of these guys. You don't need a whole lot, but you know you need kind of that much, more or less. Maybe a smaller one down there, I guess. Yeah. Okay, to have all those uh, brush strokes. Okay, and then we can grab all these guys. No, oh, there's more. Okay, and you can convert those guys into poly pen, poly pen effect to curves, right? That's going to convert those into curves. As you can see now, we have a bunch of curves. Okay, uh, and then you have to get all those curves. Is there underneath some weird grouping, right? So it's kind of like really hard to deal with. And also, you have to rebuild and do everything. So that's why I developed this tool. Like you can find the link down there. I have a Gumroad link if you want to get it. Uh, it's it's not free though. Anyway, so um, this code is able to just click on convert pen effect to curve to just convert those guys into curve now, and put them into a small neat group. Okay, they are also rebuilt with ten uh, CV point. Okay, that's also can you can do that manually also after you convert those guys uh, by doing modify convert pen effect to curves right you can then grab the curves and you go for rebuild right to rebuild them uh, with 10, 10 spans okay uh, and also I think they're having too much wobble so I'm gonna go for curve and there's a smooth command to make them smoother okay all right so we have a first cluster of hair guys that we can use. But we need them to be rooted on the geometry. If you take a look at that now, you can see now this is the head, and those are the curves, and but they're not really rooted, right? So it would be nice if the first point is on the geometry. Okay. Now, to, and also we kind of wanted the hair to be growing only on the scalp, not the full body. That would be too heavy to deal with, and the UV is too small in that case. So I'm gonna go to the right view here and go to face mode. I'm gonna go grab all the faces that I think I ever need to grow the hair on. Okay, I'm holding down Control Shift to add select all these guys. Okay, let's see. That's all the all the hair pieces. Maybe one more. Uh, all the geometries that I think the hair needs to be growing on, right? And with that selected, my code also does its cool thing, which makes a geometry out of the selection. And it's gonna give you a warning, which uh, because uh, we're gonna use the blend shape to bind the new geometry uh, and make it follow the old geometry, and that's based on blend shape te technique. So um, it's gonna have to freeze the transformation to be able to do that. So it's gonna ask you for that. Uh, if you're doing a rig already, you have all those things in there. This would destroy the rig. If you, that's the case, you use the wrap deformer. But I'm gonna use blend shape because I have no rig. I would do that before rig anyways. Oh, and also, we kind of also wanted to select, almost forget. Let me turn on the symmetry. Also the faces you wanted to have for the eyebrow, right? So these guys, I guess I can have one, one lesser row here. Okay. And then these faces, these two rows. All right, turn off symmetry. That's going to be all the faces I need to grow the hair on. Right now, with those selected, I can then make follow hair base and hit OK. Okay, what it does now is going to create a new geometry uh, with the faces we were selecting earlier. And those geometry are now following the deformation of the original model. So if I go ahead and do something to the model here, like that, for example, you can see the new uh, new model follows that deformation. And if you take a look at what's going on to the new model, you can see it's just using a blend shape to, to drive it. 
Okay. Now the reason it has to destroy all the history this guy is having is because this model is not the, the same shape as this model. So to make the blend shape work, you have to use vertex order. And vertex order for this model has to be starting from zero somewhere on this geometry. But this geometry may be having a vertex order that has zero here on this point. Then there's no way they can match. So you have to kind of like really reorder this entire thing, which destroys everything this guy has. So I would highly recommend you do action here before you rig it. Otherwise, you, you, you have to use rough deformer if you have the rig already. And then after this setup, you just don't worry about it, right? It's going to be following. Okay, so you just rig your character like a normal thing. The hair will already follow uh, the, the body. Okay. Anyway, so if you do, if, if you want to do that manually, I, I believe there is some tutorial out there. Um, but basically, what's happening is you you have this this face duplicated, right? And then for the original model, you have to delete those faces, and you duplicate this model and combine that with the original model that has those faces deleted. And you combine them by selecting this guy first, and then the rest of the model, you combine them. That way, we'll reevaluate the vertex order to have the first model you are selecting to have the 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 vertex that has uh, the smaller or starting from the smaller one, or the, this one you're selecting first, and then the second one. That way, they are having the same vertex order on this piece. Or on this area, if that makes sense. So it's a lot of work, as that's why I, I do all those like creating little script to to help me to, to to do that. Anyway, so yeah, with that being created, then I can grab all the curves. Oh, it's better to rename those things. Uh, so this is gonna be body uh, hair hair base, right? Okay, and then I'm gonna go grab all the curves and then the hair base. Another little feature I created with my code is to root. The curve to the skin. So what you do is you grab the curves and in the skin you root them. You can see now how they are rooted to the, uh, the the surface of the geometry, and the, and this number here is going to determine how many points will be moved to gradually root it. If I use three, then the only three uh, control vertex from the first one to the next and to the next, those three will be moved, and that's why. Oh, that's why you can see the rest of the things are remaining their original shape. But I want to have a smoother transition, so I'm going to go change that to 10, because I have 10 points. So every point will be moved a little bit, so that this is going to be gradually blended to the root, as you can see here. All right, so yeah, that's going to be the first video. As you can see, we can use this code to quickly do the routing. So to do that manually is going to be taking you a lot of time. You can grab this guy. I, first of all, you need to be snapped here, so you can grab that and make it live. And you can go to the first point, which in you can grab all these and select first CV. And you can drag them down. The problem is it's not guaranteed to snap them to a proper place, as you can see, which is annoying. Right, so that's why I developed this code. It's just gonna find the closest point on the surface and just move that point there instead of trying to use it snapping tool. And secondly, you just have to manually drag those individual points to make them fall down that way. So yeah, for those two difficulties or time consuming operations, I developed a little code to do that. Okay. And that's the power of coding, right? You you can automate a lot of process. So I'm going to grab those curves and that and then root it. Okay, again, you can get this this thing on GAM road. I have a link down there, but it's not free. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, that's it. Uh, let's move on to the next video and we keep on building our action here. Okay, see you next time.